Ladies and gentlemen, today I bring you with one of the longest videos I've ever produced on this channel. It is ranking every single zombies map from worst to best. I'm talking Treyarch. I'm talking non-Treyarch. I'm talking remasters. I'm talking remakes. This is everything, okay? With everything that we've got on this list, it is going to be 60 maps. However, I will only be ranking 56 of them because the other four that I will not be ranking because they are too similar are the Black Ops one remasters of the world at war maps those maps will not be ranked i will be saying which one i personally like better but they will not have their specific spot on the list now also we're going to be ranking these maps on how the map itself plays and not necessarily how great the game engine is on that map so for example if we're talking about bo4 some bo4 maps might even be better than some bo3 maps just because it is how the map itself plays now also, Grief and Turn will not be included in this list at all, as well as Black Ops 4 Gauntlets. Transit will be subdivided into Bus Depot, Farm, Town, and obviously itself. And also, I have played all of these maps, so don't think I don't have any credit on this, and I have done all of the Easter eggs for every single one of these maps. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Coming down into our number 60th spot, the worst zombies map of all time. This is the Tortured Path. In World War II Zombies, the third DLC was called the Tortured Path, and when this released, this was probably the worst Zombies experience ever. Why? Because it's not Zombies at all. It's three survival maps that don't play anything like Zombies, and are way too hardcore dedicated, and especially when this map released, a lot of these mini maps were locked until you beat the first map, so you couldn't even play the DLC that you paid for! The playlist itself was locked. You had to initially actually play it on public matches as well. I remember it was a complete fiasco. It was awful. There are must-do objectives in this where if you do not do the objective, you literally get a game over. There's no second chance. Nothing is a complete disaster from what zombies originated to become into this mode. There's no flow. It is designed specifically for hardcore players, and I could not understand unless you are a top tier zombies youtuber or player why you would ever decide to play this map i had to replay it for this video to understand how terrible it was genuinely one of the worst things i have ever played and i will never go back to play it ever again coming down to our number 59 spot we have infection and now the funniest part about this map is it's complete filler number one and a people don't even call it by its map name it is called burger town all the community is like, oh, it's Burger Town. Oh, it's Burger Town. No, this map is called Infection. Okay? And the other problem with this, there's also must-do objectives in this. And But the thing is, they don't necessarily end your game, so it's not as bad as the Tortured Path. However, if you do not do these objectives, like escorting a survivor, the map itself literally locks down. This map should not be called Burger Town. It should not be called Infection. It should be called The Sewer, because you get locked into that map after round 30. There's incredible Incredibly difficult bosses. Your guns are so weak. The pack punch system in Exo Zombies is terrible. The Easter egg is about making a goddamn hamburger. What? Who's making hamburgers? Why is this important? Why would? What is? What does that do for the whole storyline? It's completely unrelated. It's another one of the facility maps. And God, Johnny J25. Why the fuck did you put this one up on your list? I don't. I don't even get it. And coming down to our number 58 spot, we have Beast from Beyond. Now, another map that was designed as filler. This was the fourth DLC for Infinite Warfare. Now, the whole problem with this map is it was specifically made for the Mephistopheles boss fight. The Mephistopheles boss fight is, to this day, one of the best experiences I've ever had in a Call of Duty Zombies game. However, to get to that Mephistopheles boss fight point by playing this map was awful. The Easter egg was tedious there was another boss fight before this that was just extinction why is extinction in zombies i do not understand it didn't make any sense in terms of how the zombies game started you would start up the game and motherfucking aliens would be running at you you're like holy shit Kylie, what the fuck is this it's not zombies okay it's a complete filler experience i don't understand what they were trying to go for it's a way too hardcore of a map and again it's another facility it's just some random 
base facility and you go outside the whole pack bunch process is you just literally build a bridge like what is going on in this map i don't understand it as the venom x which i guess is cool from extinction but again if you don't like extinction like i do then it's gonna be one of your worst maps now coming down to our next spot i know i'm gonna get hate for this i know i'm gonna get hate for this i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say I'm gonna say it, it's Blood of the Dead. Runs on the Black Ops 4 engine, so zombies are running at you like they've got crack, LSD, and cocaine all inside their nostrils. I don't know, I don't understand what's going on. I will say though that Blood of the Dead adds some of the best zombie songs that it has ever graced on any single game. Like, where are we going? It's truly one of the best masterpieces. The boss fight is ass. Everything is ass about this map. I hate it, it is awful. And coming down to our next spot, we have Bus Depot. Could you imagine? I like Bus Depot over blood of the dead this is bare bones at its finest okay i don't like bare bones zombies gameplay there's no perks in this map it's literally a couple of wall of guns and a mystery box that's it They're, they have nothing else on this map it's not forcing gameplay for example but again your average runtime on this map is about to be 10 minutes because there are two it's a two hit system on top of that okay but then you got lava zombies coming at you exploding you and you get red screen off of one hit why even bother all the ray gun mark 2 is in this map as well but the percentage chance of you getting that thing is so low it's way too difficult there's no progression in this map you literally just pick up a gun and that's your whole thing it's fun for a little bit but again i would not even bother on to our next spot it is the frozen dawn this was the final dlc for world war ii zombies and i think another reason why i hate this is similar to bus depot but i find this map to be incredibly bare bones if you do not look up a guide if you do not look up the easter egg tutorial there is nothing to this map it is not suited for casuals at all i was playing this map and i could not find anything i don't know what any thing was i just fell and died and i don't know i don't understand what was going on with this whole game it doesn't make any sense like let me tell you this okay the map is so difficult you get an achievement for opening the starting room door like what is going on with that like i was walking around in this map you open up doors you waste all your money and i'm just getting nothing the whole interesting part about this map is outside of the map it's this beautiful mound and you're like oh my god can i go there where can i go to this part no you never go to it the boss fight is incredibly difficult again it is another hardcore experience that i just don't understand the new addition of the zombies are just fast zombies i don't understand it's a boring zombies map it was boring end cutscene one of the worst zombies masks for sure i've ever played and coming down to a next spot i know people are gonna hate me with this one it's voyage of despair baby it's a facility map inside the titanic the titanic is not utilized there's nothing about it that even works with it like man why are you shooting planets on a titanic you're shooting planets who has shooting planets I just i'm about to have a whole ass heart attack just thinking about this map there's the layout on this map is so confusing as well go left go right it doesn't matter you're gonna end up in fucking japan i don't know where the hell i'm going on this map there's nothing about this the enemy variation is terrible i don't know those shovel fuckers i don't even know their names they're awful they throw shit at you just like the raven the redwoods aped i hate this map it is awful the boss fight i will say is one of the best boss fights ever but to get to that point with a kraken and all of that with all the blight fathers is a dreadful process and i genuinely don't think i will ever go back to playing it and that is not even including the hard mode gauntlet and then the regular gauntlet on this map oh, get that out of here get that out of here okay now coming down to our next spot this is the darkest shore now one of the worst parts about the darkest shore the dlc one for world war ii is that it's just an incredibly forgettable map there's a lot of interesting features like there's this really interesting feature with a mine cart mechanic where you go into this one room and you can kind of change the tracks on where you go i really like that aspect but again i don't know why it was included i don't get the whole easter egg process as well like what's going on there what's going on with the whole easter egg the meister mucleurs that they added for the boss fight was definitely interesting they were terrifying but again what was the point i didn't understand this whole map it was like you just kind of ended up there's like just a random whale in the spawn room why is there a whale I you're asking the wrong guy. I genuinely don't understand what this map was for. The Easter egg was very random. Like, I literally remember this one clip of JC just in a gunner shooting down planes, and I just don't ever want to think about that ever again, okay? So, the Darkest Shore is still going to remain down here. It's way too dark. The whistlings were brought back from this map from the Final Reich. Why? Why? 
why sledgehammer games why i will never understand the darkest shore is just unforgettable and just adds too many questionable features to its map and coming down to our next spot this is the attack of the radioactive thing now the radioactive thing for infinite warfare in dlc3 was also it suffered from the same problems incredibly forgettable map one of the biggest problems with this map was when it first released and the colors for this map were just so bland and that's actually even a part of its easter egg where you have to switch the filter that you're looking through when you're playing the gameplay god like magic could you imagine if you're colorblind you had to play that map for an easter egg god it would be awful i remember part of the easter egg you're literally doing multiplication and addition the whole ass bed mass is in the easter egg steps now i don't understand i know the last step for this easter egg was incredibly interesting with all the alchemy that you had to basically bring into the map for the nuke i love that i thought the boss fight was actually also really interesting as well and the new perk that they added was really cool and it's kind of what we saw in black ops 4 with zombie shell but yet again there's way too many parts the gameplay is way all over the place the wonder weapon the mad thing the mad is just so bad like i don't understand that weapon at all and again it's another map designed specifically for hardcore players if you're not a hardcore player don't even bother buying it and again finally lads finally we've hit it the next spot is transit i know could you believe that it took us this long to get the transit again the map itself is a challenge we all know why it's bad it's got some of the worst bosses and zombies one of the worst traveling mechanics you gotta bring these alien motherfuckers on your head jump into a lamp post and hope for the best way too many parts there's no accessible inventory again the gameplay as well is awful with the fog reliance you're relying on the bank you have the galva knuckles as well where it's like oh my god it's like jimmy zelinsky what were you thinking like i literally remember youtube videos of like ngt zombies they're like punching random things on the wall and they're saying guys come on i know there's more i know <laughs> I know there's more to the map. There's no more to the map. Coming down to the next spot, it is farm. Now, again, it's another bare bones map, but it's way more enjoyable than transit. The reason why I like it, obviously, more than Bus Depot is because you can actually get some perks. Oh my gosh, you can get Juggernaut, you can get the original four, so that's really nice. And again, another problem it suffers with Bus Depot is the lava zombies as well. They can do a lot of damage, and again, they're not as common because the lava part on farm is near the garage, which is near the back, but unfortunately, they can still be a major pain in the ass farm also has a lot of tight corners so if you get stuck it's basically game over it's definitely a, a map more suited for co-op there uh, uh the training spaces as well in the map are quite good they're definitely better than bus depot but again the perks are basically why it's above here and again i find the reagan march suit to be just a tad bit easier to get on this map than of course bus depot now come down to our next spot it is nuketown i don't like newtown i think mp remakes for zombies Zombies maps are just truly bad. Now it's funny because recently I just realized that World at War actually has zombies maps that are all remakes from MP. But the problem is, or the difference is with World at War, is that these maps are actually made with love and care and they are designed specifically for a new mode rather than Nuketown being like, yo, just drop the perks in like five rounds later and that's a zombies map. So again, I don't understand the whole point of this map. It's way too bland. It's not fun. It's not appealing. I know a lot of people describe it as like the combat training of zombies so if you like want to get better then you play nuketown in a way i get that but it's like combat training in zombies is just every zombies map so i don't know it's it's definitely up to interpretation for nuketown but come down to a next spot it is shallon shuffle now shallon shuffle it had a groove to the map okay i won't lie but the one of the major problems with this easter egg was so convoluted this if this map was just all over the place and i think that was infinite warfare's problem like we're going from morse code steps to to fucking killing a rat in the sewer i don't who's making this map i genuinely don't know i gotta say though the new york setting in the background was incredible the karate was also one of the greatest additions in zombies it just sucks that on co-op it's way too buggy and can even become laggy and unplayable to the fact that you can fully lag out of your game just by just just by sh showing down the the, the swan styles <laughs> So I don't even know what's going on there. Again, it has the four Wonder Weapon copies, and that's not really good. Uh, there's no actual Wonder Weapon on the map. There's no gun. Like, I guess there's the sword, the wolf sword, but it's not that good. And again, 
The YouTube tutorials on this map are a must. Like, I swear, I had to look up tutorial to find Jug. To find Juggernog. You know a map's bad when you have to look up tutorial to find Juggernog, okay? Coming down to our next spot. It is Die Rise. Now, the reason why I put it so low is because I think it adds parkour. Parkour is something that zombies desperately needs in its Easter eggs. I think that would be so much fun. It would add this incredibly fun skill aspect to the game. But again, it just destroys the flow of the map with the elevators. If you're waiting for elevators and you can't grab the key if you don't have a trample scene, it's just terrible design. Like genuinely, Jimmy Zielinski hated us. I, I'm, I'm coming to the realization that Jimmy Zielinski hated us. He teased PhD flopper on this map, but made it so that you can't get, get it. He, he hated us. This man hated us. The slick fire was also patched. The Easter egg was so strange. Like you're shooting people with a ballistic knife. You do, oh, God knows what you're doing in that Easter egg. Like genuinely, the wall guns were also fantastic. The PDW made a debut. The SVUAS made a debut. The AN94, some of the best wall guns ever in Call of Duty Zombies. But again, if one of your teammates goes down in this zombies map, you might as well just say bye from the other end of Die Rise because they're are never coming up again it's way too random of a map and it doesn't really flow with what they were trying to go for and jumping jacks i know a lot of people don't like them as some of the worst zombie bosses but hey we ride with it okay but coming down to our next spot it is alpha Omega. Now, Alpha Omega is one of those maps where it's just reused assets everywhere. You load into the map, you have already played it if you have played a Call of Duty game. The Ray Gun Mark IIs, the four variations of them were really interesting, but I didn't really find them to be fun after the first couple games. The Easter Egg steps were really strange, and they just added another Sophia named Rushmore into the map. Again, it doesn't really make any sense why they also brought back the Abu Ghadro. Like, again, a lot of this map just felt so forced, and it, to me, it didn't really feel Feel like any natural progression was allowed in this map i feel especially that the black ops 4 system is over reliance on the wraith fire i mean if you do not have the wraith fire you genuinely cannot play this map there's nothing innovative the map travel is not good at all i'm gonna be honest the, the boss fight was okay i guess but to get to that point and to do all that stuff it's just not about it i'm definitely not gonna play it again but that is alpha omega now coming down to a next spot this is actually going to be carrier from exo zombies now one of the favorite parts about carrier is that this easter egg was new it was fun you had to get drunk and go through a laser tag obstacle course oh my you know sign me up that is incredible again it falls into the trap of exo zombies where there's all these weird facilities that you got to do and weird easter egg steps like man you're like fishing for stuff i don't know what's going on the infected enemies are truly at their worst in this map i guess they're at their worst in infection or burger town but they're truly at this worst because man you're playing search and destroy you can just literally have people spawn in on you and just, and just I don't understand it they they kill you they're awful I don't get what was going on they lock down the map get rid of map lockdowns like could you imagine if Brutus locked the map on Mob of the Dead it would be one of the worst maps ever it would be so bad I don't get it the Wonder Weapon the LZ52 Limbo was really exciting but again it was nothing crazy it was just another facility map there are cool interesting parts of the map where you can see like sharks or uh, different people underwater or stuff but again i think it could have been better and i think uh exo zombies did have better to offer later but coming down to our next spot this is rave in the redwoods now this is one of the fastest easter eggs to ever be solved this easter egg was solved in under one day the uh, the boss fight was one of the best boss fights i think i've seen in infinite warfare it was a lot of fun it was super interesting you have to use utilize the rave mode and you have to go to different areas of the island i thought it was incredible i actually really liked it it was an incredibly short easter egg as well which i didn't like the wonder weapons were not really that interesting you had crossbows i don't know there was a definite over reliance on rave mode and i'm not totally sure why and again the enemies were so strange like why apes on a rave i i don't understand again all over the place that was one of the main problems of iw the traps were also very strange i don't understand the traps and like how to get to power and it, and i don't know it's way too confusing ghost and skulls oh, don't even talk about that and again it was a large map and it wasn't really interconnected it wasn't what my favorite for sure but anyways coming down into the next map it is going to be the shangri-la zombies chronicles version now the major problem i found with shangri-la on zombies chronicles was that there was no phd flopper without phd flopper to me the map is basically unplayable you're really relying on getting the baby gun and getting the ray gun mark ii and the problem with that is you need to get the gobble gums then and it sort of becomes a pay to play map which i don't really like but man this map was truly 
arguably one of the most beautiful remasters that Zombies Chronicles put out. But again, if you're trying to pack a punch and you're playing on public matches, don't even try. You're going to be sweating. You're going to be strong. I don't know what you're going to be doing. It's going to be awful. But again, it's a fairly simple map and it's great with friends. It is so much more a co-op map than it is solo, especially if you're trying to go for high rounds. Don't even talk to me. You're going to be running around the map. It's a challenge map for sure. And if you're not about it, then I totally understand it. Now, coming down to our next spot, this is the Shino Numa version from Black Ops 1 and World at War. Now, with this version, I actually really like the World at War version over the Black Ops 1 version because you can glitch the map basically and get to really high rounds. And I think this is one of those maps that just never got enough recognition, even when it released in Zombies Chronicles. You can get the fast rounds. The Black Ops 1 gun variety was so much fun. I remember there was a glitch where you could like swim under the water in the map. That was incredible. But the bare bones on this map was done perfectly in co-op. You got four sides, you got four random perks. It makes the game fun. It makes it interesting. And the Wonder Waff on this map was really fun. And I love the way the zombies move on this map. I don't know what it is, man, but the way they move, they got this like weird kind of jig to their step. I just love it. And again, the aesthetic of the swamp was super interesting to zombies and very unique. And it's definitely one of my favorite maps for sure. But now coming down to our next spot, it is Nocturne Toad. And I can't believe I put it this high in the list. It is the Black Ops 1 and World at War version. Now, obviously, it's the first zombies map. Everything on this zombies map is based off of nostalgia. It is scary. You're running away. I know everybody in round one is sleeping. They're like, <sighs> like, bro, when's the zombies coming? But I, I listen, I get that. But this is one of those zombies maps where the ray gun actually means something. You get the ray gun on the World of War version, you are going crazy. And in Black Ops 1, you got the thunder gun. That was so much fun. It was one of those maps that you camp in, but it's hard and enjoyable. I think it's basically, you can compare it to Bus Depot, but with a wonder weapon and just a little bit more. And also the Black Ops 1 version adds mule kick so it's really fun just to over rely on your guns with friends i love it one of my favorite experiences now coming down to our next spot i think this is a surprising pick but this is actually grossed in the house from world war ii zombies now i think that the world war ii zombies tutorial for the game mode is one of the best things ever introduced in its entirety there's a lot of little secret easter eggs so that you can get more powerful weapons there's a mystery box as well that makes it so much more fun i think it is high rounds done right with the right guns. I think they nailed it perfectly. Also, there's a lot of fun little challenges that you can do to get your characters unlocked with the higher rounds on Groston House. It would be an absolute staple if it was in World at War, and I think it is definitely one of those underappreciated gems that people don't know enough about. Come down to our next spot. It is also, again, Nocturne Toten, but this is the Zombies Chronicle version. Now, listen, let me tell you this, guys. Gobblegums change everything i'm talking you can get perks on nocturne totem now you can get all of them you can get the upgraded guns you can even have the ultra rare gobble gums that skip rounds or get the power vacuum or you can get everything it was so much fun especially on a co-op this is definitely one of those maps i would load up on co-op and have a lot of fun and i think it truly fully hit its potential in black ops 3 with the gobble gums the gobble gums change this map entirely and make it so much more interesting in that fact now, coming down to our next spot, this is the Verruckt Zombies map on the Black Ops 1 and the World at War version. Now, I think I like the World at War version just because I played it with Pat recently. It was a lot of fun, and it really makes you realize how every single bullet counts in this map. Oh my gosh, there is no room for messing around, especially in the World at War version where the zombies, like, suck you in. It's crazy. Like, the traps in this map are truly your best friend. I know in the Black Ops 1 version, they added the Winter's Howl, I know a lot of people were upset because Nocturne Toten had the Thunder Gun, while this map had the inferior Wonder Weapon with the Winter's Howl, but I think that's what made it just so much more harder, but also enjoyable as well. It was a different Zombies engine, but that change between World at War and Black Ops 1 made it so much more iconic, and again, it's one of the most scariest Zombies maps to date. But anyways, coming down to our next spot, this has got to be Outbreak. Now, Outbreak was the first Zombies map, the DLC one, to be released in Advanced Warfare 
Crosshair Zombies, and I thought it was fantastic. It's a simplistic Easter egg, but that's what made it so much fun. It was a facility map that actually worked. The whole map is about finding the ID cards to gain access to some sort of intel and to leave the whole Zombies outbreak. It was an incredible starting map, and I think the exosuits actually added a vertical flow that was so interesting to see in Zombies. There were these kill streaks that they added as well. The grenades and the explosives in this map were some of the most powerful grenades and explosives ever. And I always wonder why in zombies, rocket launchers and grenades are weak. Like what? They're, they're actual explosive guns. How are they not destroying the zombies? I'll never understand this, but Exo Zombies did that right. Perks can also come back to you if you die in solo. It was one of the greatest zombies maps for sure. But the only problem is, is that the pack a bunch process on this map was kind of bad. And again, it, I think that's more of a gameplay engine because with a gameplay engine with the pack a bunch you have to put it in like 20 times just to get the best version of the gun again it was a great starting map but the engine kind of took it back a little especially with the infected zombies now coming down to our next spot on the list this is town town i think is the peak of all bare bones survival maps it is simplicity but in a very challenging matter that's not unfair if there's lava zombies just get jug if there's something that's too powerful just get the ray gun mark too i think there's these aspects about it that allow you to go and play the map more and more because there's always an option to when you're presented a problem of course as well there's also vertical space more so than in farm which i really liked and again the training spots on this map are phenomenal and actually make you engaged with the map where you're not just kind of tuned out but you're actually enjoying the map and seeing like oh my gosh okay i don't want to jump in this lava but it's hectic in a fun aspect obviously i do think the Black Ops 3 version made by Zella in the custom zombies mode is a lot better, especially because it adds PhD flopper, adds banana colada, it adds different areas into the map. It's for sure a better experience, but if we're just talking about the main maps, I think town still is the best. Now, coming down to our next spot, this is Verruckt in Zombies Chronicles. Now, again, I put Verruckt here because Gobblegums with friends on this map are incredible. What else can I really say? You've got the PPSH, you've got different wonder weapons as well. There's a lot of interesting little easter eggs that zombie chronicles adds like there's this little doll of ricked off and i love that it makes high rounds also really fun and very interesting because now you can actually camp a lot longer and a lot farther and higher into the rounds it makes you play the map so much more differently and it looks stunning as well on the remaster i love the little fountain in the middle it's got this little blood easter egg oh i love it it's an incredible map it's fun it's subtle it's great coming down to our next spot here this has got to be descent now, Descent, I think, is the closest that we will ever get to an underwater Atlantis. I don't think we will ever get anything more than this. It added the Blunderbuss, which is probably the best shotgun ever introduced into Call of Duty Zombies. The actual wonder weapon on this map, the Trident, was terrible. I don't understand why it was added. It was just not good. The uh, parkour Easter egg step on this was probably one of my favorites and it added challenges in a very interesting way that I think Zombies has never actually gone back on. There's kill streaks in this as well, where you can like go into a mech suit and use the death machine. These the type of things were what made the map fun, and they use that in the Easter egg as well. The Oz boss fight was great with all these fun little gameplay additions and how you have to beat him and then also not die from him. One of my favorite maps, especially in Exo Zombies, and I think if Exo Zombies would have started on Descent, it would have become a much better game than what it was initially. Now coming down to our next spot. This this is Shinonuma on Zombies Chronicles. Again, it's kind of like Verruckt where it just adds this perfect balance of co-op gameplay. Public matches are made so much more fun, especially if somebody hits the door, it's the wrong perk, but you still see a gobblegum machine. It adds that layout where it's like, okay, I don't have to stress, but I can enjoy it and have fun. It is also one of the most beautiful remasters, again, I've ever seen. There's a lot of more different camping strategies and you can actually hoard more now. If there's no glitches, unfortunately, like the Black Ops 1 version, like I said with the swimming. I think what makes the map fun is the gobble gums in itself. Like, come on, those are the glitches. Let's just be honest. Now, coming down to our next spot, this is actually the Shadowed Throne. Now, the Shadowed Throne is the second DLC for World War II, and I think it's one of the best 
maps for sure on the game. It adds a lot of fun and interesting wonder weapons. The map layout is so cool, especially because it adds a museum into zombies. Like, sure, one of the sides of the map is a theater, but yeah, we've seen a theater, we've been in Kino, but a museum in zombies was something so interesting, and I know they tried to kind of incorporate that with the gameplay of the map, but hey, I enjoyed it for what it was. I think the story was kind of bad, though. Like, the whole story in World War II zombies is kind of bad, but don't let me get you wrong here. The boss fight on this map was excellent. I think it was well done. You, like, travel up into this blimp into the sky and go and kill this awesome big freakish zombie i loved it i haven't played it too often since obviously because a lot of people don't play it but i really liked it i wish there was more to this map i wish it added a couple more side easter eggs i know they didn't have a lot to put into this but hey there were a lot of these funny little interactive easter eggs as well where you'd like walk into the room and you just see somebody die and convert into a zombie i always thought that was funny but again let's go on to our next spot this has got to be shangri-la on the black ops one version. All I'm gonna say is PhD flopper. The Easter egg as well was initially solved. It actually added a coherent story about Brock and Gary and I love that. The on to the next map here. This has got to be Moon from Black Ops 1 and I think it really balanced PhD flopper in this map because of that one aspect and I don't know if, if Zombies has ever gotten to that type of balancing since Moon. In and on to our next spot ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be Dead of the Night. Now Dead of the Night is one of those maps where I, if you just turn off the gameplay audio from the characters and the story it's actually kind of fun the characters in this map are so awful and it's astounding to me that you have people like Helena Bonham Carter and you make them just some of the most annoying people I've ever heard oh my god play this map and turn off the character audio please like the setting in this map is so gorgeous as well it's literally Dracula the movie but as a map again the convoluted steps of the Easter egg in this map don't really help its case as well. Obviously, it's Dracula. There's the sense of high intelligence of all the Dracula movies. I totally get that. But again, I think this is another one of those maps where it's co-op based more than solo. If you have to do everything on solo, especially for the Easter egg on this map, it's way too long and it's just so exhausting to do. There are a lot of little interesting side Easter eggs though, like the Savage Impaler, which I liked, and also the Steak Knife. That was really cool to kill the vampires. But again, the werewolves were manageable, but the vampires in this map are just awful. I hate the way that they don't let you regenerate your health. They're completely ass. Now, coming down to our next spot, it's a Black Ops 3 map. It's Zetsubo no Shima. Now, obviously, it's the worst of Black Ops 3, yet still one of the best maps to grace all of Call of Duty Zombies. It adds a simple Easter egg where basically you're getting cogs for an elevator to fight Tokyo that's been infested by all of the herbs that's been growing on the island. I really like that part, but again, the Wonder Weapon as well is really interesting. It's a fertilizer gun. It has a lot of different uses around the map. You can shoot at spores to make you run faster. You can fertilize different plants. The mama spider as well as the boss. Like, goddamn, tell me you did not go into that boss fight and you were not excited when you saw that. Like, I was freaked out, but man, it was so fun. Again, I know a lot of people don't really like the thrashers or the spiders, and I can totally understand that. But the map layout is really interesting. I just wish the map travel was a little bit more better. Swimming on this map was done perfectly. Perfectly. It really makes you feel like you're actually in an adventure and you're trying to discover something rather than swimming on Voyage of Despair where you just turn off a valve. I really dislike that. And again, the power in this map was different. I know a lot of people disliked it because of the bucket system, but if you know what you're doing and if you're having fun and you're getting past the garbage challenges, Zetsubo no Shima still stands today. And on to our next map here, it is Classified. Now Classified fixed a lot of Five's issues of teleportation. But I think everything else is just inferior to 5 when you're looking at it. Okay, so with the classified, the shield is just so essential in this map. And if you're not knowing how to play a shield, like if you're a casual player just going into classified, you're not going to last long. The shield is everything on this map. I do like the inclusion of the moon pack-a-punch. And I also like the little fun side Easter egg for the Winter's Howl as well. I thought those were fun and little interesting innovations. And I wish that was the main Easter egg because because 
the main easter egg was one of the worst experiences ever truly possibly one of the worst easter eggs ever having to reach round 150 to just see a cutscene it's an innovative idea but i hope something like that never ever graces zombies ever again the jump scare on this map obviously it's last gen ricked off and like come on it was incredible i don't understand again class 5 was good but i think 5 is definitely a lot better now coming down to our next spot this is actually revelations now revelations in my opinion was the culmination of black ops 3 it was a culmination of everything great about zombies you had this overpowered wonder weapon with the apothecan servant we could finally upgrade it it was so much fun the easter egg was so hard to solve and i think that's what made people just gravitate towards the map it was incredibly fun to speed run as well later on when the whole community was about speed running i love doing that easter egg speed run the keeper protector was a great addition and also something that you had to get for the easter egg which i really liked so it made you use the whole asset of the map the pack a bunch was so cool where you go inside the apothecary's mouth oh i love that that was so much fun especially because it looks like halo 3 it looks like you just went into a halo 3 mission it adds one of the best spawn rooms as well into all of call of duty zombies and again like it or hate it if you don't like it then i get it but if you hate it i don't know man it's got all these great zombies maps it's definitely up to interpretation but anyways coming out to our next spot this is the best world war ii zombies map it is the final right all i'm gonna say is that the notebook made this map now, i know that the colors and the ambiance of this map were just awful i don't like the dark gritty setting of world war ii zombies but man it's just so much fun when it's just not complicated and you can just follow an objective tier list on your screen i think that is something that black ops 5 zombies should truly capitalize on i thought black ops 4 would but that just did not happen please bring the notebook or some sort of variation back to it i think that alone makes the zombies map just leagues above the rest it adds an interesting wonder weapon with a tesla coil gun i also really like the boss fight the panzer mortar where there's like an easy version and a harder version of it i really like that i don't like the whistlings i think they ruin the map i think they add just terrible variation i think the bombers and the treasure zombies are fine as well but again i just do not like those whistlings they're awful there's a lot of little fun side easter eggs in this map i also like i like the jack in the boxes as well with all the reskins like i know the reskins of monkey bombs but i think the way they do it in the world war ii style definitely works the melee weapons in this map are fantastic i love the shovel that you can just whip it out i also love the sword that you get oh it was incredible incredible boss fight i love this map for sure coming out to our next spot i think a lot of people are gonna be surprised i put it up this high it's togder toten and i know a lot of people are like really like you saw the end of the ether zombies map as this incredible experience now i have to tell you guys this okay everybody hold the phone okay hold the phone i think if you just look past that is the end of ether and just see it as a interesting but unique zombies map of call of the dead but extenuated i think that's where it shines i obviously have a bias for call of the dead but call of the dead without george and expanded areas and the thunder gun i think was incredible you got these amazing selection of wonder weapons apart from the tundra gun i know it's just ridiculous why did they add it it's so bad the samantha box also was really cool the easter egg was kind of okay as well like i don't know it was pretty fun there were a lot of interesting steps and again the map travel with the flinger was done perfectly in this map i loved it the glitch with the thunder gun on the zip line oh just i love this map i wish that was still in the game i would do that glitch every single time if it was still in here i think the challenges around the map are also really well done where they're not difficult like zetsubo no shima but they add this right balance to add a good progression throughout the map so Togger Toten is definitely a biased choice, but I have it all the way up here. And on to our next spot. This is Moon from Zombies Chronicles, one of my favorite remasters. It is gorgeous. It is for sure graphically the best remaster in all of Zombies Chronicles, hands down. Now, I know with this map, they decided that Widow's Wine would replace PhD and solve it, but I think it only works in this map. I don't think it works outside of anything that BL3 introduced, and I really wish that PhD was a staple throughout Black Ops 3 and even Black Ops 2 zombies for God's sakes. Like, what's the problem with PhD? They added it in Black Ops 4, but nobody wanted it in Black 
Black Ops 4. I don't get it, man. There's got a great Easter egg in this as well. And also the great part about it is that the past Easter eggs that you needed to do in Black Ops 1, like the Shangri-La Easter egg and the Call of the Dead Easter egg are not required. The Gobblegums change point generation as well. So in No Man's Land, you can pop some sort of Gobblegum that gives you instant weapons and you can get so much money just from one Gobblegum. I really like that aspect and it made it a lot of fun to just speed run on the map where it's not necessarily relying heavily on RNG when you can pop immolation liquidation or just skip rounds to get the excavator. It was truly one of my favorite remasters for sure. Now coming on to our next zombies map, this has got to be Buried. Now Buried is the ultimate sandbox of zombies maps, okay? Sharpshooter is probably one of my favorite easter egg steps ever. Sure it's rage infuriating, sure people get mad about it, but hey, it's the best co-op easter egg step that they have ever introduced and you cannot tell me wrong. Put your opinions down in the comment section below and I will tell you that they're wrong, okay? The starting room was fantastic in this map as well. I love the risk and the reward for the LSAT where you have to get it for 2,000 points. Another excellent feature in a zombies map that I wish was included. The incredible ending game easter egg with Max's and Rick Toffin with both sides being so unique and adding these different rewards was fantastic. Also, Arthur or Leroy in the map was phenomenal. He had all these wide range of features that have never to this day been returned in zombies where you could keep a box at its same location or you could move a box with him or you could hold a zombie. I love Arthur. I wish he would come back into more zombies maps. God damn it. The box and the bank were also perfect in this game. This was the one map that Jimmy Zelinski loved us in, okay? And on to our next spot here. We've got Darius, the World at War and Black Ops 1 version. The World at War version is not that great because of the uh, problem with the zombies where they black hole you, but hey, don't let me say that because I enjoyed my time playing with Matt Milo and Pat recently on the map. It was incredible. I definitely loved that. Again, it's Darius. It was what zombies became as. It was the full staple of what zombies would become. I know the Black Ops 1 version was also a lot of fun and it added the basic fixes to all of Darius where you didn't get down with Wonder Waff where if you had Juggernaug, you know, it added all these fantastic features and I loved it in Black Ops 1. And on to our next map, it is Ascension from Black Ops 1. Again, it is an absolute classic, but I just hate the monkeys on this map. I think they're one of the worst bosses ever to be introduced. It fit perfectly with the Black Ops 1 campaign at the time. I think that was really enjoyable. The Lunar Landers were so much fun as well, just to be on and enjoy and look at the view and get to pack much stuff. I love Ascension for this. I remember speed running it for E4 C2 on Zombies Chronicles. That was a lot of fun. And even on the Black Ops 1 version, the aesthetic is gorgeous. I don't know what it is, but it is so beautiful with this map. The pack bunch process, again, with the three lunar landers and you launch the rocket is super new and super interesting as well. You have these great training areas around the map, like at Pack-a-Punch or at PhD Flopper. They were so good. And of course, PhD made this map so much better. It was the first introduction of it along with stamina up. Nothing is wasted in this map. You want to go to every portion of this map. And that's what I like it. And coming down to our next spot, it's Keynote or Totem. Man, I don't know what Keynote or Totem was on with the alley space because, man, who goes into the alley in Keynote or Totem? Nobody does. That's the most wasted space. But other than that, Keto Tone has this beautiful skybox. There's such incredible gun selection throughout the map. It was such a great map to introduce the Thunder Gun on as well. What a staple that this map was. It was Darius's innovation that exploded within Keto Tone, is how I see it. I thought Nova Crawlers were also a great enemy variation. The traps were so much fun with the different fire traps and then the electric trap. And then you had the turret traps that would kill all of the things. I love it man incredible training areas it's where i learned to train it's where most people learn to train and again it makes such a fun experience when you're trying to get these reels and you're going to all these different rooms throughout the pack a bunch i love it is an iconic zombies experience now coming on to our next map this is the giant now the giant to me is the peak of darice i played the most when it was on the giant okay gobblegums intensified this gameplay so much more and that to me was what made it beautiful obviously the actual 
actual remaster itself being on Black Ops 3 was gorgeous. It was graphically phenomenal. I love the different colors that they introduced with the Orange Origins robot as well, and a lot of emphasis on red throughout the map. I really like that. The fly trap actually gave you a reward this time. That was the best part about it. You got the Annihilator, and obviously it's not the greatest specialist weapon, but hey, it's better than nothing back in Doris and World at War in Black Ops 1. You get this interesting perk easter egg with the Origins robot head where you can either get stamina up or Deadshot Daiquiri. I really love that. And again, this is the Doris I played the most. This is where I call my home. Now coming down to our next spot, this has got to be Kino Dertoten on Zombies Chronicles. And all I can say is the starting room and the whole map in general is beyond stunning. It went from a bland theater to an iconic place with a starting room filled with gold and beautiful iconic masterpieces of all of these different movies throughout the map. I really like the way that the developers added it. It's just such a lavish experience and I think classic gobblegums especially on this map really shine. There's a lot of fun little easter eggs again like with the tapes and also you can do the Samantha easter egg with the door. I thought that was super cool and I know a lot of you guys were definitely interested into that and it uses the map more especially with the gobblegum machines. You actually go to the alleyway because there's gobblegum machines there you're like oh my god there's an actual use for it it's not just ass like i'm not just never gonna go here when i open it but yeah keto to tone on zombies chronicles definitely better than the other versions now coming down to our next spot it's five now five is a master class to me in zombies design it takes three floors and makes it so terrifying to the point where you teleport and you have no clue where you are and i think that disorientation is what makes it better than classified now i know classified made it easier to figure out where you were going but I think that was the point of 5. 5 is just a confusing zombies map. It's fun, it's short, but and again, it's not intended for high rounds with uh, the traps. I guess it is with the traps because you can get them, but the Wonder Weapon is definitely not intended for high rounds, I'll tell you. The Pentagon Thief also should have been brought back into Classified here. It is such a staple with the Bonfire Sale. I really love that. I know the Bonfire Sale is in Classified, but man, where's the Pentagon Thief? Where's my boy Yuri, man? I just don't know. They just get it with the storyline. and oh, shit, I just don't like it, man. I don't know. But again, the Nova Crawlers were also done incredible with this map where you would go to the bottom floor and they would come out. It was just as scary as Verruckt, and I think that's what makes it great. Now, coming down to our next map, it is Ascension on Zombies Chronicles. Now, the monkeys in this map were finally solved, and they weren't solved with Perkaholic because if you popped a Perkaholic in Zombie Chronicles Ascension, you would just lose all of that so fast. But, man, this map was also another map that was just beautiful beyond beautiful for words. You added these crazy Dr. Monty Easter eggs around in the map. I love that. It was incredible on co-op. I know I just love this map on co-op, especially on public matches when you're playing with people that have no idea what they're doing. I love that. You actually made the Easter egg speed runnable with the gobblegums as well, where you're trying to get all of these overpowered things like the Gersh devices and the Thunder Gun and all that. It's actually speed runnable in Chronicles, whereas in Black Ops 1, you're literally hoping for the best luck that you can get. And coming down to our next spot, this is Origins on Zombies Chronicles. I believe that the Zombies Chronicles version is inferior to Black Ops 2 simply because of the lack of glitches that the Black Ops 2 version introduced. It's funny how glitches can sometimes really make or break a Zombies map. I think it definitely fits into Black Ops 2 more, especially with Gobblegums kind of ruining the flow of Origins. You know, you have these staffs as well that were introduced and added the whole four Wonder Weapon style gameplay, which was beautiful. The generators to turn on power was super innovative the trailers as well were so incredibly hype i can't imagine how people would react to them now like man they would be so excited to see something like that the giant robots on the map made a definite hazard on the map that felt like zombies but also felt like world war one at the same time the tank was a super interesting feature it was just so beautiful and i just wish that zombies chronicles added those glitches but i understand why they took them out like i get it you're going at it from a developer standpoint i totally understand it but again there's no glitch knife the gobblegums made it bad what can you do now coming down to our next spot on this list it is ancient evil now to me ancient evil was the peak of the chaos zombies map it added unique gauntlet wonder weapons a fun easter egg a mythological setting that was so gorgeous beyond belief even with the bad texture quality of black ops 4 i loved it it added the feature to skip in-game cutscenes which was really interesting and incredible for speed 
speedrunning and added a unique boss fight, but also a bad in-game boss. I know a lot of people didn't like the Giga Knees, but again, he's uh, he, I didn't ever saw him as bad. You know, if you just shoot his weak spots and just get, get him over with with good guns, you'll be all right. Black Ops 4 is an easy enough game. Again, the ending cutscene is, was also very strange with Medusa. I didn't understand that. Again, I don't really get the point of chaos and the challenges of this map were also done incredibly well with the Unicorn Strike. I know being a part of it and all of that. I love this map. I think it did Black Ops 4 a very good service. But again, it's not good as the peak of Black Ops 4, which is nine baby perks as map locations was genius. It was, ge it was genius. <laughs> it was so good, man. I love that the Wonder Weapon, the Scorpion was so beautiful. It added an exhilarating Easter egg to the map where it was so much fun. It was challenging. It was actually based off of skill and not just random Easter egg location parts or whatever. The challenging steps were so much fun, like where you had to kill all the zombies with your specialist weapon or the, uh, the elephant boss. Like, I it's just, it was an incredible experience. It's just too bad that the Black Ops 4 system is just so limited. It adds po quite possibly the best starting room to all of Call of Duty zombies. The pack bunch process was so much fun. It was just easy, you know, just kill this one type of boss and then that's it. Bring it down to the bottom and get the gun pack bunch. I really like that. The shield on this map, oh my gosh, the bull shield was probably the most beautiful shield we've ever even seen in zombies and it adds all of these great side Easter eggs into the mode that I don't think I will ever get to see in any other Call of Duty Zombies map. Like they're just so unique and interesting and I wish they were brought back more so into the future. And coming down into our next spot, you are lying to yourself if this is not what it is for you. It is Space Land, most underappreciated gem I've ever seen in Call of Duty Zombies. It's silly wonder weapons and a silly setting made perfect for a Zombies gameplay. I loved it. The legendary alien boss was hard, but so so exhilarating when you finally got to beat it. The Easter egg was fast and easy. You added all of these fun aspects like the arcade and roller coasters as the traps and the layout of the map was so well done. It was so large, but that's what made it so fun. I love that idea. You added all these different slot machines and all these things that made the map so interesting. The whole ghost and skulls thing, I think really f fit the map on Spaceline. And again, boys, you got basketball, baby. What can I even say like that? God damn. Again, coming down to our next spot, we have Shadows of Evil. This is Treyarch's masterpiece. I mean, when we went into the Treyarch studios, they had Shadows of Evil plastered everywhere. It is truly their baby. And man, the Apothkins on this map and the Keepers, it all somehow worked with the whole zombie setting. You added this funny Easter egg ending cutscene with Rick Top and just yoinking that summoning key. I really love that. The Easter egg itself was so much fun with all the different swords and all of that. They were challenging and, you know, it was fun. But the last step was pretty bad. I'm gonna be honest. The last step was not good with the co-op thing. Again, there's no cohesion with that step, and there's no cohesion at times with the map. But again, there's an excellent pack bunch system where you have to explore. It's a hardcore map, but I think it's integral for all zombies players to have played. And coming down to our next spot, we're getting to the really good ones now. It's the Rise and Drac. The Rise and Drac was the peak of the zombies community. This was Origins on crack. I mean, we blew up the moon for God's sakes. We we blew up the moon. It was the first zombie boss fight at the end of an easter egg that was introduced and I could only imagine how it was to experience that without knowing what was going on when we were hunting for the easter egg. It was so much fun. It was panzers but even harder because we had gobble gums to help us. Gobble gums also on this map weren't too OP like I guess you could run a head drama but they weren't really that bad. The side easter eggs in this map were also a lot of fun and it was a simplistic map that was made right and perfect for what Black Ops 3 was eventually going to exceed itself into. And coming down to our next spot, we have Mob of the Dead. Pat calls this a movie in a map. You've got this beautiful Hell's Retriever on the map. You've got dog heads. You've got this prisoner feel around the map. You've got a great cast, the afterlife, the Easter egg made sense in every single way. It is better than Blood of the Dead. It is so good. You've got incredible trailers as well. It was an all time classic and it literally saved my YouTube channel. Coming down into our number three spot, this is gonna be Origins from Black Ops 2 and like I said it was the peak of innovation for zombies glitches somehow made the map better don't even come at me but glitches somehow made the map better gobble gums were not needed and you can really just tell with the progression and the flow of the Black Ops 2 version sure it's harder with the two hit system but that's what makes it more exciting co-op or solo it doesn't matter this map works with any of them the speed run addiction that the community was on with this map was what 
what made this map incredibly legendary, especially with all of the world records that people got with getting sub hour runs on the map. I just, I don't even understand how that was possible. It was truly one of those maps that you'll never get old of and that people will continue playing until probably their death. And now coming down to our top number two spots, I know people disagree with me, but I'm gonna say them. Our number two spot is Call of the Dead. I call me bias, call me whatever the hell you want. This is a great map. It has possibly the one of the most perfect map layouts ever. It's so interesting to just run around this map and feel and understand where you are. The map travel with the flingers and the zip lines were incredible. It astounds me to think like how maps like Shangri-La or even some other maps didn't even incorporate zip lines at all. I don't even understand that looking at Call of the Dead. The map's Easter egg was so much fun with the door and just seeing all of Ultimus on the other side and you're trying to get them to go to Shangri-La. I really liked it. Obviously the map was not meant for high rounds, but that's what made it fun. It was just a casual map at its finest. And of course, George Romero with his fun but rewarding boss fight, and I well, that boss fight, I guess you always have a boss fight with him, was fun. It was so challenging. Obviously the Easter egg was silly and the story was fun and all of the extra perks or whatever were just incredible. But hey, Call of the Dead is my number two map. Come at me if you think I'm wrong, but the number one best zombie map I'm gonna say it once I'm gonna say it again I'm gonna say it however damn many times I need to it's Garan Grovey baby perfect gameplay perfect easter egg along with the gameplay don't even come at me with the stupid generator step I don't even want to hear it the dragons work so well it's just basically an inverse to Reese I got round 100 on it the Riga mark 3 is on it I got round 100 on it as one of the most hype ending cutscenes ever teasing origins or not origins it teases revelations. I got around a hundred on it, baby. Last original Treyarch map as well. I don't think there's a Treyarch map like this that has been made, obviously, other than Chaos, but this is the last original Ether Zombies map. The enemy balance with the Manglers and the Valkyries was perfect, man. And the Gauntlet of Siegfried with the little baby. You can't even tell me that wasn't good. The Dragon Strike, the Lockdown, the everything. Ladies and gentlemen, that was it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. This took forever to do. I did this whole recording with no pants and you didn't even know about it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much and I'll see you oh my god in the next one.